What kind of understanding do we have about a place? How do our memories affect our understanding? What happens if we learn the memories of other people? How does it affect our understanding? In this study, we investigate methodological possibilities of a combined method, transgenerational walking interviews, in the context of architectural memory and meaning of place. This exploratory approach aims to determine an adapted protocol as well as to identify the possibilities and limitations of using this method and the type of data that can be collected. Before going into the details of our methodology and results, we would like to briefly position our research within the existing literature. Working nowadays with memory, place and people-place relationships, we aim to shift the focus from the heritage-related task of identifying what matters to understanding how and why heritage holds importance to individuals, communities and societies. While we are all aware of ties that can exist between us and places, the literature presents various ways of naming these bonds. Sense of place, meaning of place, place attachment or place identity. The notion of place generally contrasts with that of space. While space refers to a geographical location, place embodies an emotional component connected to a particular setting. Hence, place attachment underscores the profound relationship individuals establish as they develop a sense of belonging and identity within their environment. These connections are not confined to the individual level, but can also resonate within entire communities. However, we might not always be consciously aware of these bonds. This highlights the indis indispensable role heritage plays in fulfilling the fundamental human requirement of knowing oneself, one's environment and one's history, as explained in the following quote by Simon Weil. Place attachment is characterized by a long enduring tie with something perceived as unique and non-interchangeable. This attachment is defined by several criteria, a long-term relationship, the uniqueness of the space, and the joy of reunion or distress when separated inexplicably. The object of attachments become a particular figure that when close, fosters a sense of security and comfort. Throughout one's lifetime, new bonds are continually formed. The nature of these experiences can be distinguished into two levels of bonds, sites as symbols evoking feelings and ties developed throughout personal experiences. Our work focuses on the personal scale, exploring the link based on individual experiences and how transgenerational sharing of experiences and second and memories can create a second and attachment in a deeper comprehension of the place. In this regard, we question how conducting memory work in a transgenerational setting can induce changes in the relationships that may exist between participants and the place. Now, first we would like to share the transgenerational walking interviews method. Second, we will discuss our methodology for this specific study. We combine uh, walking interviews, a well-used method in environmental and place-related studies, to gather experiential data related to a particular place, with intergenerational interviews, which are used to reveal diverse points of view, experiences, and memories of different generations, as well as their interrelations. Walking interviews, sometimes also called go-along interviews or commentated walks simply refer to an interview in which the interviewer and interviewee walk together in a specific place related to the research question. This method is beneficial for situating narratives in their spatial context, using the environment as a trigger for discussions, involving various stimuli. It is sensory, spontaneous, informal, and less structured, allowing participants to have more control and take a more active role. Intergenerational interviews refer to an interview in which two people from different generations come together. Generally, the younger person 
takes the interviewer's role. Intergenerational interviews offer several benefits. They help get to know a person better, break assumptions about the other, improve communication skills, and create bonds between people. The method that we define here as transgenerational walking interviews refers to an interview in which two people from different generations come together. The younger person takes on the role of interviewer to conduct a walking interview in a place significant to the older participant. To conduct these interviews, researchers explain the research protocol to participants, who are then asked to guide the visit. The younger participant has question cards to inspire them, prepared and provided by the researchers. Researchers remain passive, only intervening with questions if there is a blockage. While we took photos and videos, we tried to remain very passive to also assess the ease of use of the method. To evaluate this method, we conducted two tests in Wallonia, Belgium, involving a senior and their grandchild at the site significant to the elder. This was followed by separate post-evaluation interviews to gather insights from both participants. Both tests held at the seniors' former workplaces, the first one at a still active small-scale secondary school, and the second one at a former industrial site now being dismantled and turned into a landmark. As mentioned earlier, the aim of this study is to evaluate the method itself rather than analyze the interview content. Therefore, we primarily use post-evaluation interviews to understand the experiences of the transgenerational interview method. These post-interviews were conducted immediately after returning from the location. Each participant was individually prompted to reflect on their personal experiences, their impressions of the walking interview, and their perceptions of the methodological aspects. These post-interviews were recorded using audio and video and transcribed for subsequent thematic analysis. We are now going to share with you um, the results of our uh, two experiments. Uh, we'll begin by the experience related insights and then we are going to move on to the methodological insights. Both younger participants noted that being physically present at the sites made the story more immersive, allowing them to better appreciate their grandparents' experiences. C'est gay, c'est agréable. C'était un moment qui était plus agréable que si ça avait été juste raconté comme une visite de musée, par exemple. C'était plus vivant. On sent que la personne est touchée, partage juste une partie de sa vie avec nous, alors que... Le, le vécu est toujours meilleur que le, le vivre dans l'espace. C'est plus agréable que de le lire sur un papier, quoi. On aurait pu avoir une photo du fourneau et dire voilà, ça, ça, ça. Mais je trouve que le voir dans l'espace, et en réalité, c'est certainement plus intéressant. Bon, disons que c'était plus vivant, parce qu'on était sur place, quoi. Mais sinon, je ne suis pas sûre que ce soit très important, mm -hmm. mais c'était agréable d'être sur place. The second result for the experience related insights is um, how being in the place at concretizing stories for the younger participants. Um, for both of them, being on site had them visualize the scenes described, which enhance their understanding and connection of the shared stories. Donc le fait, les souvenirs qu'il m'a qu partagé m'a marqué peut-être plus parce que j ai, j ai, je, je peux y associer euh, une image. Ici, dans la discussion que j'ai eu avec mon grand-père, il y a eu beaucoup d'images, beaucoup de, beaucoup de concrets, beaucoup de visuels qui a été liés aux anecdotes qu'il m'a racontées, etc. Et ça, je pense que oui, en effet, euh, si, enfin, je ne vais pas revoir de la même façon le, le, le site quoi, à partir de maintenant. L'avantage d'être sur place, c'est qu'on visualise beaucoup mieux la chose. Tu, tu es à l'endroit et on peut même, euh, je veux dire, imiter ou reproduire ce que ce qu'il faisait à l'époque alors que autour d'une table c'est plus difficile et on s'imagine pas forcément comment ça se passe dans en vrai. 
Both older participants expressed positive emotions about revisiting significant places from their past. During the post interviews, they mentioned that they didn't find the on site experience essential to their storytelling. However, they also acknowledged that being on site was naturally beneficial and both had at least one memory elicited by being in the place. Il y avait un moment où vous souvenez quelque chose vous... Ah oui, oui, mais si, si tu en es dans le terrain, forcément. Euh, L'aspect des bâtiments qui, évidemment, ne ressemblent plus à rien maintenant, qui sont éventrés, euh, comme s'il y avait une explosion, quoi. Ça, ça fait drôle de mm -hmm. le voir comme ça. Est-ce que vous avez un moment précis de la visite où vous vous êtes souvenu euh, de quelque chose en particulier dont vous ne vous étiez pas souvenu depuis longtemps et... Je ne vois pas quelque chose de spécial. Je connaissais tellement le site par cœur que j'y serais allé les yeux fermés. Quoi. Quand on a vu la, la plaque, par exemple, je me suis souvenu de la pose de la première pierre, des bâtiments, des visites des ministres, etc. Oui, bien sûr. On the other hand, younger participants observed a change in the stories of older participants during the walks, noting that they became more engaged with the place. Et en fait, si, si, vraiment là, au moment où on a été, on est rentré, enfin, on est resté à l'entrée, mais quand on est quand même rentré, qu'on a vu un peu plus l'intérieur du site et tout, euh, j'ai clairement vu une valeur ajoutée. J'ai remarqué un changement Enfin, au niveau de mon grand-père, c'était... Là, ça lui, a... ça lui a rappelé directement plus de choses. Lui, il se posait plein de petites questions. Il se souvient de ça. Learning more about the site and connecting it to personal stories also changed the perception and value of the place for the younger participants. For example, for one of them, who already knew the industrial site where his grandfather worked, uh, he shared that re-exploring it with his grandfather enabled him to gain a deeper understanding of the place and its significance through the visual and emotional connection. Je savais que c'était une vieille usine, je savais que c'était euh, Léo Fourneau, je savais qu'il qu y avait plus rien qui était censé fonctionner à ce niveau-là, et que c'était voué à, à disparaître. Euh... Enfin, je... Non, ben voilà. Par exemple, il y a une idée qui a changé, c'est que je pensais que ça allait totalement disparaître. Et au fur et à mesure de la discussion, je me suis rendu compte que c'était... Bah, vachement intéressant d'avoir... Euh... Enfin, je me suis dit pendant l'interview, ah, ce serait vraiment chouette que, comme moi j'avais visité euh, la mine de Blenny, il y ait un petit truc, euh, un petit musée, ou, enfin, ou même euh, un programme qui permettait d'échanger un peu des, des souvenirs, de, de l'histoire, comment ça s'est passé, etc. Et du coup, à, au fur et à mesure de l'interview, quand on était sur le site, voir, enfin, entendre que le monsieur disait qu'a priori, on, ils allaient conserver une partie pour... Euh, pour, euh, bah, pour le patrimoine et des choses comme ça, bah, ça je trouvais ça super intéressant. De base, j'aurais jamais spécialement pensé parce que moi, bah, je n'ai pas grandi avec, euh, ça ne m'a pas impacté plus que ça. Euh, je ne suis pas particulièrement attaché au, au paysage industriel, euh, etc. Mais par contre, euh, cette idée de, ouais, de, de passer l'histoire, de, de comprendre un peu comment s'est développé tout le bassin liégeois et des choses comme ça, ça je trouve ça intéressant. Quoi. Um, for the intergenerational results that we found interesting, uh, while both grandparents shared that their engagement would be similar without their grandchildren present, both grandchildren perceived their grandparents to be more engaged when sharing stories with them rather than with researchers they didn't know. Alors ça c'est un peu un avis que j'ai sur, euh, sur la, la génération euh, sur nous, mais... Je pense que déjà de la part d'anciens travailleurs ou de personnes plus âgées, etc., il y a une certaine pudeur à, à se livrer parfois sur certaines choses. Ici, moi, mon grand-père, par exemple, il n'a pas hésité à, à raconter des anecdotes qui l'ont un peu ému ou qui l'ont choqué ou qui lui ont fait peur ou des choses comme ça, qui, je pense, ne sont pas des choses qu'on raconte à n'importe qui. Euh... Et donc, je pense que le fait que ce soit mon grand-père, la vraie valeur ajoutée, c'est que ça vient rajouter peut-être de l'émotion au souvenir, de l'émotion au à l'histoire quoi. La, 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 la visite aurait été très intéressante avec quelqu'un qui connaissait bien le site aussi, etc. Mais ça aurait été moins personnalisé. Quoi. Mm. Additionally, also uh, the grandparents mentioned that they were not particularly emotional about returning to the site of their careers. The grandchildren believed that their grandparents were actually emotionally affected by the visit, and both thought that it was a deeply personal experience for them. Mais étonnamment, 
ça ne, ça ne j'ai dit à Alice, ça ne m'a pas ému terriblement. J'étais contente de revoir, mais disons que ça ne m'a pas touché profondément. Moving on now with the methodological insights. Um, first, we would like to present the preparation need for the interviewer that we noticed. So none of the younger participants were experienced in interview methods. Initially, uh, both felt unprepared, but they relaxed over time uh, as the interview progressed. They found the preparation question uh, cards useful to start the interview or when they were stuck. One of them um, preferred to have one or a few questions that were more precise, uh, emphasizing the importance of a clear guidance and preparation while they both acknowledged the less structured nature of such methods. Parce que comme, enfin, du coup c'est normal, mais comme c'est pas très guidé, c'est dur au début d'avoir la mise en marche. Mais une fois que c'est lancé, en général ça va, mais c'est surtout le début qui est difficile. Je m'attendais à avoir un cadre de base, en tout cas un peu plus précis, et puis après qu'il laisse euh, libre cours à, à des divergences. The older participants expressed a desire for more information beforehand about the type of question that would be asked and how they could better prepare for sharing, like, quote unquote, interesting memories. À part que je ne savais pas du tout dans quel genre de questions vous alliez m'emmener. Ça, mm. c'est un peu une inconnue pour moi, je me dis. Oui, oui, parce que je me demandais, tu sais, qu'est-ce qu'ils vont pouvoir me poser comme question. Euh, ce sont des jeunes, euh, j'ai un vécu, euh, qu'est-ce qu'ils voient à travers moi, donc... Euh... The impact of non-defined parcours. Um... So since the route uh, wasn't defined before the working interview, it enabled the older participants as the interviewee to take a more active role and guide the interview. Le parcours c'était chouette, parce que du coup c'est... Enfin, c'était aussi euh... Mais la personne qui nous guide, enfin qui, qui nous guide vraiment, on, on suit ce qu'elle l'aurait fait. Si on avait guidé le parcours, on ne serait pas été aussi euh, naturel. Alors que là, elle nous expliquait vraiment de ce qui lui, enfin, ce qui lui semblait vraiment important. One of our main uh, results is that not only walking, but also peripheral moments were valuable. Uh, conversations in cars were also found important, for example, as they provided a comfortable setting for the older participants to share their memories while driving around familiar neighborhoods and discussing the evolution of their former workplaces surroundings. This mobile aspect of the interviews allowed them for a dynamic interaction with the environment and sparked additional reflection and stories. Our method benefited younger participants by allowing them to interview and understand the place through first-hand narratives. Emphasizing personal stories proved more engaging than traditional methods, like guided visits by cultural professionals. It enabled younger participants to question the heritage value of the place, fostering a transgenerational understanding and enhancing heritage sensitization efforts. Older participants may not always see the importance of sharing memories with grandchildren, but grandchildren value these moments as opportunities to learn new aspects of their grandparents' lives. Younger participants' perceptions of other participants' experiences were somewhat contradictory. We suggest further exploration through focus group interviews to understand these differences better in future studies. Despite the method having minimal guidance, it was successfully applied by participants, so it can be easily used in community research settings. Participant-led interviews empower individuals by fostering control and expression, making them highly recommended for community research. However, the quality of questions posed by participants can vary depending on their personality and lack of experience. Therefore, for community research, it's advisable to offer a brief training session for participants.